Good morning, folks. We're on to part two of our little fifth bearing build here. And we're just doing a little more pattern making this morning. I'm not going to work too long on it because there again, we're cold in the cold little shop. And Anyway, I'm not going to show all those steps, but we'll give you an overview. This is the initial pattern that I cut out with the scroll saw. I've already taken it into the oscillating spindle sander, and I smoothed up all our, all our edges to where we've got a fairly smooth edge. We're still at 90 degrees. And what I did is I took a piece of quarter inch plywood. This, of course, is the side that faces down, so we're looking at it just like this is the way we're looking at it. The next layer, we're going to compensate for our uh, the back piece or the outer part of our um, timing gear here. So I think quarter inch is enough for that. This is about a quarter inch piece, a little bit, a little bit more than that. This might be, you know, almost three eighths. But anyway, that'll be fine. And what I did is I traced out. This is the way it'll go. Traced out the inner dimensions on it, so that I can carry it on up on the bottom, and then the inner dimensions. I've not added any draft to this pattern yet. I'm going to do that here in just a few minutes. So anyway, this is the inside dimension of where it picks up on the uh, on the bottom piece that we've already cut out and formed. So I gave me about a quarter inch, quarter inch, three eighths inch spacing around there. I'm going to go ahead and cut the outer edge of that to give us our next layer. And I'm going to cut out the center because that will be beveled out of 45. And I'll have to go back and fill this because I didn't leave enough for draft on the inside to, to form that. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll just do a rough cutout on the inside so we can start forming that for this next layer. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and cut this part out on the scroll saw. And then I'm going to go back to the spindle sander and I'll smooth that up a little bit on the inside especially. Well, there's nothing on the inside that has to be done yet. Uh, I'm going to give us a little bit of draft. This is just going to be a loose cast pattern, so I'll probably give it five to seven degrees draft is all I'll get. It doesn't take a whole lot for it. And I'll do that on the outside. Then I'm going to go ahead and smooth this up and probably go ahead and sand a little bit of draft into that anyway if, if I need to. And then we'll go ahead and glue it to this part. So that'll be our second layer. And then we'll build probably the last layer for the bearing support itself, for the bearing and the seal on the outside. We'll do that with whatever appropriate metal is, but I've got to decide what bearing I'm going to do before that. So anyway, next thing is add draft to the outer edge of this, cut this out, and glue them together. So after we get these cut out and sanded, I'll bring it back and we'll see where we're at. Right, well, here's our rough cut for the outside, or for the next layer. And what I'm going to do is to kind of mark those contours for the inside when we cut this we're just going to mark this with some sharpie so we know when we sand it to that point just use that as a layout color and since we're going to sand our draft in we're going to mark the outside the same way so when we sanded our Sharpie mark away, why we've got draft all the way down to the bottom of the, of the pattern. And I'm doing this just on my little standard um, rigid os oscillating spindle sander. Works really well for this kind of stuff. Um, you've seen me use it in some of my old other videos. I'll go back and see uh, oh, building access panels. We used it and there's a few other ones. I'll, I'll put a link up above um, so you can go back and find some of those and, so you know what we're doing there. Actually, I think well, we'll go ahead and sand the outer one and then we'll, then we'll cut the draft on it. Well, what we've done is we have put our draft on the edges of this. We put our draft on the edge of this. So these are ready to glue together. And what I've done is I've marked where they align inside. Once I've got them glued and they've dried a little bit, I'm going to go back to the spindle sander set probably about a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to round out this hole somewhat. Um, 
until I get my contour clear to the edge of where it uh, comes on the inside of this of this casting right here. So we'll just bevel that down so we've got pretty much clearance on here. What I'm going to do is um, go ahead and install this and then I'm going to install just a probably a half or three quarter, probably about a three quarter inch piece of wood right on top to do the top part because I don't know what bearing I'm going to use here yet. That'll give me plenty of depth and I can go back and sand it later if I want. Plus, uh, I plan on boring it, probably line boring it once it's set up on a block. So I'm just going to leave that solid. I'll use that as a pour spout, use that as a shrinkage area. So that'll give me a, should give me a real good casting, lots of feed on it, and then I will bend it a couple of times, a couple of different places when we cast it, when we set that up. But anyway, for right now, I'm just going to glue these pieces together. Uh, normally I would brad nail these. I don't really feel the need on this particular casting, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue it up and let it dry, and then we'll go back and um, sand that inner contour. So this inner contour will be, it'll have to have some filler in it. I didn't allow any any extra space in here for uh, the angle or the draft that goes on the, the inside around this area. So we'll go ahead and build that up once we get that far. But anyway, we'll let this dry and uh, then we can go back, clean it up a little bit more and sand it out. There's our patterns glued together. Like I say, we'll take some, it'll take some cleanup and everything. But I'm going to go ahead and go out and at least start sanding this contour. the back portion from where we are right now. This will have to be filled in here. That'll all have to be filled it in. And we'll have to finalize the shape of that a little bit. But all in all that doesn't look too bad. The outside we're we got there but there again we can always change these contours. Now what we'll do is we'll add one more piece on top. Like I say probably three quarter inch stock come up. We'll just add draft to that around very similar to that. And um, then we'll put that on there. I just had a question which I actually addressed a little bit after I'd already shot the first part of this video and I'll address it a little bit here was how do I intend to um, bore the hole through the through the center to, to hold the bearing in the seal so it's going to maintain alignment with the crankshaft and what my intent is is I will do the machining on the back side of it to flatten it out and the bottom side so I've got those to where I can bolt it onto the block once it's bolted onto the block and I'm not going to initially cut this hole at all I'm going to use this probably as a feeder hole uh, when I pour this casting so that'll allow for shrinkage and I'll, I'll put a big um, pour spout in there and then gate it off to the um, gate it off probably off the bottom corners for uh, risers 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the machining on the back, do the machining on the bottom, and um, then spot face where the bolts are going to go through to put it in place. I'm going to go ahead and bolt it onto the block that it's going to go on and bore for my pins so that we've got definite alignment so it's going to go on and off as many times as it need to and, and be correctly aligned with the with the alignment pins or just like was in the factory except we'll bore those um, probably do an oversized pin so that we can make sure we get them concentric and where they're supposed to be. Then my intent is to bolt it up onto the block that I'm going to run this fifth bearing on and there again since it's not a production item since it's a, a one-off or a two-off whatever the case may be for my own uses as time goes on why um, I don't I'm not worried about being able to, to take one fifth bearing off and put it on another block at this point in time. If I bore one to fit one block, why that's fine. Once they're bolted in place, I'm going to basically line bore them. I'll set them up in the bearings on the crankshaft and I'll build a custom boring bar for that. Um, so it will actually run in the bearings of the block itself. And I'll just use that with a, I'll, I'll build a boring head in there. And we'll just line bore that right on out through. So as long as I've got a good setup and my boring bar is true, fits the fits the bearings the way they're supposed to in the block and everything I can run straight on through and it can't help but be straight so that's the intent that's the way that I intend to board at this point in time you know everything's subject to change we may modify that that thinking or that design a little bit when we get get to that point but um, that's the way I intend to do it I don't see a problem with doing that it'll line up just fine and we'll have a perfectly aligned fifth bearing um, as far as the bearing surface on the end of the crankshaft what I'm going to do is fit a fit the extension that will ride in that bearing onto the end of the crankshaft. Um, it won't be welded. I see some of the guys are welding them on. I'm not comfortable doing that. I'm going to go ahead and do a press fit on the end of the end of the crank snout with the with the bearing gear or with the um, with the gear and everything on the on the crankshaft. We'll align that to be a press fit and then it'll bolt into place. Just you know, be be captive by the by the um, by the bolts that go through and uh, or the studs that go through and hold the propeller and the hub on so we'll do that that way and then we'll um, then we'll grind that probably in a tool post grinder on the on the uh, lathe is how we'll do that so that way everything will run concentric I, I think we can do a real good job that way and have a real good safe bearing Anyway, if you find this interesting, why well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like them. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out the next in the series of these videos. So, thanks for taking the time to watch.